Aloha, and welcome to the latest edition of Telehealth in Hawaii. I'm your host, Vikram Macharya. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Cloudwell Health, an all virtual telemedicine platform based in Hawaii. We have a very cool show for you today. We have two nurse practitioners, educators, and leaders, Becky Yoza and Pamela Smith. Becky and Pam, how are you today? Good, nice to see you. Thank you for having us today. Always a pleasure, Hi. always a pleasure to talk to both of you. The topic today is Shamnad University in Healthcare. Becky and Pam, it looks like you're taking care of patients right now. <laughs> We're always prepared for that. Exactly, exactly. To get things started, uh, tell me a little bit about yourselves. We'll start with, with Pam. Um, where you're from, what got you into healthcare, and we'll go from there. Well, sure. Um, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland, uh, but I've been here in Hawaii for 20 years. And I have always had a passion for healthcare, for helping others, and really being a part of the solution. And my career evolved from being a registered nurse to becoming a nurse practitioner. And through my experiences in clinical practice, then desiring to become a educator um, and administrator so that I can help others be part of the healthcare system. That's excellent. Becky, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Hi, thank you for having me. So I'm from Benton Harbor, Michigan, originally. Uh, I uh, started out in uh, survey research, more of social sciences. So I have a sociology background and I sort of fell into uh, data management for clinical trials research. Uh, and the clinical area was becoming more interesting to me. So I decided to become a nurse and I was a registered nurse uh, for a few years in Colorado. And uh, the providers that I was working with really encouraged me to become a nurse practitioner and have more autonomy and decision-making and independent mm -hmm. practice. Uh, and it was actually uh, Pam that recruited me uh, to become an educator, to be a mentor, preceptor, and clinical instructor for uh, her uh, family nurse practitioner students, uh, and then it evolved from there. That's very interesting. So you guys have known each other for quite some time. Uh, yes. Now you both made the jump from um, registered nurses to nurse practitioners. Um, we'll start with you, Becky. What what made you want to make that uh, advancement to the to becoming a nurse practitioner? Uh, that's a great question. So. As I was working as a registered nurse, I just wanted to learn more and expand my practice so I could take better care of my patients. And the uh, providers that I was working with, uh, I was an inpatient uh, registered nurse uh, in Colorado. And the providers I was working with, it was physicians, but it was also physician assistants and nurse practitioners uh, in the hospitalist service uh, really encouraged me because I would always ask questions about the patients, about their care, about the pathophysiology, the pharmacology. So they really encouraged me to continue my education and become a nurse practitioner. And I really wanted to have that independent practice, which uh, thankfully in Hawaii, we have independent practice as uh, nurse practitioners. So it's a real advantage. Yeah. Pam, uh, what brought you to, the to make the decision on advancement? Yeah, great question. Uh, for me, I found that I wanted to have more autonomy to care for patients in a more comprehensive manner. Um, I found that oftentimes there were, uh, or sometimes there could be pieces missing from a patient's care, not connecting all of the dots um, and looking at the patient as a whole. And I found that advancing my education as a nurse practitioner um, so that I can help patients really be treated with from all angles um, in terms of looking at what are their social determinants of health, what are their health care, what are their risk factors as far as their lifestyle, you know, and all the way to, okay, well, what disease processes do they have? What medications are, are they on? You know, is every angle being looked at and really being able to offer that systematic, uh, sorry, systematic process for each patient, as well as the healthcare system, and to be able to say, look, the healthcare system could use a fix here. Let's look, look for to, um, solutions towards that. Yeah. Now, both of you mentioned the level of autonomy for nurse practitioners in Hawaii, which is great, especially I would think when it comes to addressing the 
significant shortage of providers there are in the state of Hawaii. Is that, that a, is that a fair assumption? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's one thing that we prepare our, our students to do. Uh, we, uh, we, we have a family nurse practitioner program uh, track and also a um, psych mental health track. And we are training our students to really step in and fill that void. There's a huge uh, shortage of primary care providers. So our family nurse practitioner mm -hmm. students when they graduate are able to step right into that role and take care of patients, their own panel of, uh, of patients for primary care. And there's also a huge shortage of psych mental health um, providers. So our psych mental health nurse practitioners with also with independent practice are able to step in and, and fill that void and take care of uh, patients in Hawaii. Yeah. Now, go ahead. Pam. In fact, that's why we chose to focus first on these areas, um, both family practice and psychiatric mental health because those are really the areas of need that we see at the forefront currently um, in our healthcare system here in Hawaii. And we wanted to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the community. Yeah, no, that's, that's wonderful. I mean, to have the availability of nurse practitioners to provide care for many in need. So you've, you've become nurse practitioners, but now you're also educators and leaders, uh, professors at Chaminade University. Uh, we'll start with Pam. What's your role at Chaminade? in terms of uh, education and leadership? Yeah, well, I'm the Associate Dean here at Chaminade University. And so my role is to help um, everything go smoothly and advance our education for all of our students here. And um, in that role, I'm also the DNP or Doctor of Nursing Practice Director. We started our program a year ago. And um, my role here is to lead that program, uh, with my colleagues. We have a FNP track coordinator who you're meeting here, Dr. Becky Yoza, a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner um, track coordinator, uh, Dr. Dana Monday, as well as an executive leader coordinator. And so together as a team, uh, we make we're here to prepare the students for what they're going to see when they graduate so that they're best prepared. Excellent. Becky, you're, what's your role at Shamanad? So I'm an assistant professor and also the family nurse practitioner uh, track coordinator for the doctor of nursing practice program. Mm -hmm. um, so we have three tracks, uh, the executive leader. So those uh, students have a master's degree in nursing already. They're typically leaders in the community already within healthcare organizations. And so we're just taking them that step forward to the doctor of nursing practice degree where they can look at uh, the healthcare system from a population health standpoint, systems, organizational um, vantage point, which all of our all of our tracks um, will do. And then as the uh, FNP track coordinator, uh, I'm guiding and mentoring our students through the program, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the, the FNP track students. Um, teaching them their didactics, but also coordinating with their preceptors who they're working with out in the community. I'm placing them in, in those clinical sites. So matching them um, with a preceptor that's gonna meet their needs um, and the student um, strengths uh, to bring to that organization. So I'm a matchmaker, if you will, <laughs> and then uh, and a mentor and then uh, assisting the students as they go through their program uh, and providing that mentorship and guidance as they uh, prepare to take their board examination, get their license, and then um, start working out in the community. These are very big roles both of you have. That's wonderful. Now, when it comes to healthcare, we have the, the let's call it the traditional model of taking care of patients in person. But now, especially, um, throughout the pandemic and then post COVID-19 pandemic, we have telehealth. Both of you are active providers in the telehealth space, but you're now you're also playing a role in teaching the future generations of nursing practitioners about telehealth at Shalmanad. Can you walk us through a little bit about the great work you're doing? We'll start with Pam. Yes, absolutely. Telehealth was a part of the healthcare landscape before COVID, as you know, and with COVID, it's just increased exponentially. Mm -hmm. uh, telehealth has been part of NP education or nurse practitioner education prior to COVID, but 
what the past few years have changed with the COVID-19 pandemic is that the amount of telehealth, as you know, has increased um, in the healthcare delivery model from primary care to urgent care and specialty settings. Our students will be graduating and we're in a few years and we're preparing them to work in the environment, the current healthcare environment and the future healthcare environment. And so what we've noticed is that we need to increase, um, well, we, we've implemented uh, quite a bit of telehealth education in the curriculum so mm -hmm. that they're prepared when they graduate to work in this setting, both at our FNP track and our psych mental mm -hmm. health track, the students will have experience doing telehealth in a simulated environment with simulated equipment, as well as in the direct patient care environment where they're working with a preceptor, delivering care um, to patients um, and so that they're getting that real life experience and preparing them for what the future holds. That's, that's very exciting. Now, now, Becky, for nurse practitioner education, there's already so much that uh, they need to be uh, taught. And, and how do you incorporate the critical component of telehealth into an already very busy, very extensive curriculum? How do you carve out the time, but make sure they still focus on um, other aspects that are equally important? Well, that's where the challenge comes in as educators uh, to be creative and uh, learn to incorporate these, uh, these technologies and these modalities into their education. So what I like to do is uh, incorporate other uh, learning objectives uh, at the same time that we're teaching them the, you know, the telehealth modalities. Uh, so just as we're teaching them how to assess patients uh, hands-on, mm -hmm. so whether seeing the patient in person, um, we're also teaching them, okay, how do you assess that patient over a telehealth visit? Yeah. Um, so uh, we can incorporate that right into their coursework. Um, for example, we're teaching the advanced health assessment uh, course this summer that is for both of our NP uh, track students. And so we're just incorporating that right into the course of this is how we assess our patient, uh, both in person and virtual. Uh, we've learned as providers over the last few years with uh, the pandemic, we have had to adjust our own practice of mm -hmm. how do we learn how to take care of patients in this modality because we were we were you know forced into it with the with the pandemic. So that is why it's very important that our faculty is very experienced um, providers in the community already that we've learned from our own experience of how we've had to adapt our own practice. And so then we're able to bring that to our students and incorporating a lot of the newer technologies uh, to, you know, that exists and continue to grow as a result of, uh, you know, the new push towards um, telehealth. There's all these products available um, that we can use uh, right in our program and right in our coursework to, to bring that to our students so that they already have that experience when they get, uh, are ready to graduate. And now, now, Pam, do you, uh, when you design the curriculum, is it first, first you need to learn really the in-person hands-on care and then we go to telehealth or is, is that the progression or is it more parallel or how, how does it work from a, from a, from a chronological standpoint in, in education? Sure, absolutely. Well, first the students, they're coming in already as nurses, as registered mm -hmm. nurses with bachelor degrees um, and some have master's degrees. Uh, some even have um, additional MP certification. But the first year of the course for our DNP students of courses are core, core courses that they need to build upon, such as advanced health assessment, advanced pharmacology, um, advanced pathophysiology. These, um, this framework of, or a base and a foundation that they can then learn their more clinical skills and management components um, is the very first step. So once they've learned uh, some foundational framework, they then move forward into their track specific courses where they're learning how to diagnose 
and manage patient care um, in a, a acute set, mostly in the primary care setting for the um, FNPs and in all practice settings for the psychiatric mental health. Both programs span the lifespan. So um, children through geriatrics, so children, adolescent, adults, and geriatrics. Um, through this didactic coursework, as well as laboratory experiential coursework, they are then um, concurrently at, level, at their second year placed with clinical preceptors. Those are one-on-one -on -one in, um, encounters with preceptors, a variety of preceptors through that year, um, typically about three. It could be a little bit more, but what, what they do, uh, what the students will learn in that process is really to provide that patient care, direct patient care, both um, physically one-on-one -on -one, um, in the real in-person environment, if you will. And then some students will gain that telehealth experience. Um, so it's not necessarily, the, the, the foundation is prior um, and then their clinical experience will be, depend on what their needs are what their gaps in knowledge are and, and what their aims are. But all students will have in-person experience with patients, um, hours, and then um, that telehealth component will also be added. What we found is um, through those many hours of experience, at least 500 hours, but really closer to, um, by the time that they're done with their program and their project, it'll be many more hours than that, a total of a thousand or more hours for their DNP. And that is that um, having that breadth of experience, um, both telehealth and in person, will provide them with that solid clinical knowledge base to provide mm -hmm. care um, when they graduate. That's really interesting. Uh, now, Becky, with um... The generation and cohorts that you're educating now who probably use a fair share of social media and thing, is there more of a proactive interest in saying, oh, I want to do telehealth. I, I really like it. And that's my focus. Uh, do you have more of that now? Or is it more towards, let's just call it the traditional form of, uh, of nursing? Are you seeing more, of, more want to do new virtual? Uh, definitely the, the younger generations are more tech savvy, I'll say. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think uh, it's easier for them to learn some of these technologies that we're, that we're learning. We do have a wide range of uh, experience levels with our uh, DMP students. So we do uh, have some students that, that aren't necessarily in that, uh, you know, uh, millennial uh, generation. Uh, so, and we have different ability levels as far as their, you know, uh, technology knowledge. Uh, the nice thing is that we have a lot of um, uh, partner organizations uh, that assist us with some of these products and they love to come in and do demos and, and teach the faculty as well as the students. And a lot of these products are very easy to use. Um, and we're finding that, you know, the telehealth, it, it really uh, assists with expanding access for patients. And I'm finding that a lot of my older patients actually love the telehealth yeah. because they don't have to leave the house. And you know, they're learning the technology, their, their children and their grandchildren are <laughs> helping them with the technology mm -hmm. um, and they're loving it. So, so it, it definitely goes both ways. And most of our students, they, they just want to absorb everything, all of the knowledge. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to add to what um, Pam was saying is out in the community, when we match our students with the, the preceptors, and then they, the students go and perform that direct patient care with their preceptor, Mm -hmm. The preceptors are already providing that telehealth as part of their practice. So yeah. the students are getting that experience in clinical where they're already seeing uh, patients virtually and patients in person. So it's pretty seamless uh, from, for, for the students. And the yeah. nice thing about our program, since it's new and we're building it from the ground up, is that we, we get to build it the way that we want it um, and be on the cutting edge 
you know, as opposed to having to go and, you know, rework um, to try to incorporate the, you know, the telehealth into something that is already existing. And the faculty are very experienced um, and have taught nurse practitioner students for many years. Yeah. And, but we're also experienced providers. So we have that ability to, to seamlessly incorporate it into our uh, curriculum. Yeah. You know, how, would, how do you teach students to approach uh, a telehealth mental health visit versus a telehealth urgent care visit? You know, obviously there's the, you're breaking down the, the clinical diagnoses, but how do you go about doing that from a virtual standpoint? Because you probably have uh, students that want to pursue mental health as well, I would think. Absolutely. Um, and the need for mental health care uh, providers is increasing. And so we're starting to see an increase in demand uh, for that education as well. Um, nurses are realizing that that's where a lot of the need um, is, and they want to prepare, um, you know, to provide care in that setting. And also they have passion to provide care in that setting. Mm -hmm. Telehealth and um, mental health, uh, the mental health discipline has been here for a very long time. It started there, right? Before mm -hmm. we started to do exams and assessments on patients outside of mental health, um, we were for many, many years, healthcare has been doing um, uh, psychiatric mental health care via telehealth. So it, that transition has, um, has been more gradual over time. And it's something that's been done in, um, in education, not just NP education, but also in, um, for MDs and medical education um, right. for a while. So uh, preparing uh, pre, um, preceptors and providers for that is it's not as much necessary because many of them are already doing it, right? Because mm -hmm. they've been providing that care in that capacity. Mm -hmm. So what we always like to do is ask the patients if they are comfortable um, with having a student. Um, and the student, of course, is dedicated to this education. They're going to be providers. They're professional and licensed already as RNs. And that's explained to any patient that might be um, in this opportunity. Also in the um, um, FNP world as well, not just like mental health. But with the patient's consent and if they're comfortable with it, then we can proceed um, with that dual, um, that dual providing of care where there's the provider as well as the student interacting mm -hmm. with the patient to really see what that patient needs and help make a plan for their care. Um, and management of their care. So it's, um, it's, it's something that's been going on. And what we've seen is there's also a lot of tools out there. Um, there's toolkits um, for educators um, and preceptors um, who might be new to it yeah. so that they can prepare and become accustomed to it. Also having um, mentors that have done this in the past, um, linking them with any new provider that might be doing this is also a way to kind of train and provide resources um, for that next step. That's very exciting. Now, on a, on a personal level, how do you toggle between these various roles you have? I mean, you're seeing patients, you're educating, you're, you're providing leadership to, for the future of, of your profession and, and for Shamanad. How do, how do you balance both? We'll start with, with Becky. How do you wear so many hats? I, I think we're, we're used to that as nurses. Yeah. That, you know, that's in, true. yeah. When we're taking care of patients as nurses, you know, you have to be maintenance, you have to be uh, housekeeping, you have to be pharmacy, you, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, I mean, you already have to do all of that anyway. Uh, I teach my undergrad students as, you know, that as the RN, we're, we're the gatekeeper. And we're we're kind of doing that care coordination, so it's similar uh, when we're wearing these different hats. It, we're, it just comes with nursing. Mm -hmm. But what I love about being a professor and being a provider is they feed off of each other. Yeah. So always when I'm in the classroom, 
I'm always relating to my students. Uh, so definitely being a practicing provider definitely helps me in the classroom, mm -hmm. you know, and the other way around too, that being up on the latest evidence-based practice as a professor, it helps me in the exam room too. Yeah. So, and then just with coming with that experience, then I'm able to share that with students and mentoring. It just, it comes naturally that when you're experienced, you want to uh, help out less experienced providers and students uh, that mentoring and educating, it's part of the nursing role. We're advocates, we're yeah. teachers just in our nursing role. And so it all, it all feeds on each other. Yeah. You know, Pam, Becky just created, gave a great analogy. You can quickly pivot from what you're seeing clinically yeah. to providing the high quality education because you're in it every day. That's right. Yep. Having that experience, um, without a doubt, it, it's easy to lend that experience forward because uh, we're, we're currently in practice. We're currently leading um, in the, an environment and we're able to seamlessly transition that, transition that content um, to our students uh, for their benefit. Yeah. It's just incredible, you know, the both of you, the, everything that you do on a daily basis. You know, you're providing care, you're protecting people, especially during the height of the COVID pandemic, you were there on the front lines providing care, but you're also looking at the future of your profession and making sure that the future of nurse, of being a nurse practitioner is well designed to now accommodate and integrate telehealth. And I can't thank you enough for being on the show. You know, both of you just do such a, such a great job not only taking care of the patient, but also uh, shaping the future. And it's just an honor. And we're all very grateful for what you're doing in the community every day and, and the great work you're doing at Shamana. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, and we are so happy to be a part of this. Oh, thank you very welcome. much. You're most welcome. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.